Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a boss in the world of organized crime? The story of Paul, Big Polly Castellano gives us an inside look at the rise and fall of a notorious mob boss. After being chosen as the new leader of the Gambino crime family, Castellano's reign was violent and brief, ending in his brutal murder in 1985. But who was Paul Castellano, and how did he become one of the most powerful crime bosses in New York City? In this video, we'll explore the brutal true story of Paul, Big Polly Castellano, from his humble beginnings in Brooklyn to his rise to power and ultimate downfall. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride through the criminal underworld. Paul Castellano, who was born in 1915 to Italian immigrants Giuseppe and Conchetta, was raised in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. He was born Constantino Paolo Castellano, but he frequently signed his name as C. Paul Castellano because he didn't like his first name. In addition to being a butcher, his father belonged to the Mangano crime family, which was the ancestor of the Gambino family. In order to assist his father in learning to butcher and collecting receipts for number games, Castellano dropped out of school in the eighth grade. He was first apprehended in 1934 for robbing a haberdasher, and after refusing to name his accomplices, he was given a three-month prison sentence. The mob loyalty Castellano developed as a result of this instance would stick with him throughout his criminal career. Castellano first became involved with the Mangano family in the 1940s, when Albert Anastasia, the boss of Vince Mangano's replacement, promoted him to capo. Castellano attended the Appalachian meeting in Appalachian, New York in 1957, following Anastasia's murder and Carlo Gambino's ascent to power. Castellano was arrested in prison for a year on contempt charges after the New York State Police raided the meeting and demanded answers from the grand jury about it. In spite of this setback, Castellano persisted in expanding his commercial empire. He founded Dial Poultry, a poultry distribution company that supplied several supermarket chains in New York City using his butcher training, and he used intimidation to convince his clients to purchase Dow's goods. As the president of Scaremix Concrete Corporation, which had almost a monopoly on the sale of construction concrete in Staten Island, Castellano also benefited from the sale of concrete for construction. A group of contractors known as the Concrete Club handled work with millions of dollars in exchange for a 2% kickback, and Castellano was in charge of the Gambino interest in that group. Castellano had connections to the Teamsters Union Local 282, which supplied labor for significant construction projects in New York and Long Island, in addition to his business dealings. But he continued to engage in criminal activity after that. He is accused of killing Vito Borelli, Constance's boyfriend, in 1975 after Borelli compared Castellano to Purdue Farms founder Frank Purdue. Later, Joseph Messino, a former leader of the Bonanno crime family and a government witness, acknowledged killing the victim as a favor for Castellano. Castellano's criminal activities eventually came to light, and he was given a five-year prison term for information withholding conspiracy. On appeal, though, his conviction was overturned because it was discovered that he was a businessman rather than a hoodlum. Despite his ostensibly legitimate business endeavors, Castellano's illegal activities persisted because of their connections to organized crime, which continued to benefit him and his family. On October 15, 1976, Carlo Gambino, the head of the Gambino crime family, died. Gambino chose Paul Castellano over Aniello Neal de la Croce to succeed him before he passed away. Gambino thought the family would benefit from Castellano's focus on white-collar businesses. De la Croce was incarcerated for tax evasion at the time of Gambino's passing and was unable to obstruct Castellano's succession. At a meeting that included De La Croce on November 24th, Castellano's succession was officially announced. This agreement effectively split the Gambino family into two rival factions despite accepting Castellano's succession. Castellano got involved in a number of disputes after becoming the new head of the Gambino family. He was charged with ordering Nicholas Shibetta, a Gambino associate, to be killed in 1978. Shibetta had insulted George DeChico's daughter and participated in numerous fights in public. Shibetta was the brother-in-law of Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, so Castellano asked Frank DeChico to let Gravano know about the upcoming hit first. Gravano became furious and threatened to kill Castellano after learning about Shibetta's fate. Gravano was ultimately persuaded to accept Shibetta's death as a retribution for his actions. Castellano was also charged with ordering the murders of mobsters James the Polital Jr. and Gambino Capo James de Paul Ital in 1978. Anthony Gaggi was allegedly invading another Polito senior's territory, and the senior Polito had asked Castellano for permission to kill Gaggi. Castellano's response was ambiguous, and he later forewarned Gaggi of a Polito's plans. In retaliation, Gaggi and soldier Roy DeMaio killed the father and son. 
Castellano facilitated a deal in February 1978 between the Gambino family and the Westies, an Irish-American gang from Manhattan's Hell's Kitchen. The Westies wanted protection from other Corsa Nostra families, and Castellano wanted hitmen who could not be connected to the Gambino family directly. The Gambino Westies alliance was founded following a meeting between Castellano and the leader of the Westies, James Coonan. The head of the Gambino crime family, Castellano, joined forces with the Cherry Hill Gambinos, a group of New Jersey-based heroin importers and distributors. He enlisted them as his gunmen, adding them to the Westies' already formidable force of expert killers. As Castellano's power and influence increased, he is accused of ordering the murder of Frank Amato, his former son-in-law who had physically abused his daughter, Connie Castellano Paul. According to FBI records, the murder was carried out by Gambino soldier Roy DeMaio, who also dismembered the body and threw the pieces into the water. Compared to James Fila and Thomas Gambino, Castellano's predecessors, he had a different approach to leadership. Castellano turned into a recluse, rarely leaving his mansion which he had built to resemble the White House. They had to go see him at Toad Hill to get orders and information. He entertained guests while working from home in velvet slippers and dressing gowns made of satin and silk. John Gotti, a former protege of Castellano, grew weary of his management though. Castellano, in his opinion, lacked street cred and the respect of those who had made a living by working the streets and was too selfish and avaricious. Gotti and Castellano frequently argued over the share of the hijacking proceeds Gotti received at the Kennedy Airport. Additionally, Castellano had forbidden the lucrative drug trade, and there were rumors that Goti was entering it. As things got worse, it was claimed that Castellano gave the order to kill Roy DeMaio, who was discovered shot dead in the trunk of his Cadillac in January 1983. In March 1983, the FBI received a warrant to place covert listening devices in Castellano's house. Agents drugged Castellano's watchdogs turned off his security system, and planted devices in his dining and living rooms while he was on vacation in Florida, gathering a lot of evidence against him. Angelo Ruggiero and Jean Gotti were detained for selling heroin in August 1983, primarily as a result of recordings from a bug in Ruggiero's home. Castellano demanded transcripts of the tapes and threatened to demote Gotti if Ruggiero refused. He had previously forbidden members of his family from dealing drugs under the threat of death. Paul Castellano was charged with federal racketeering on March 30, 1984, in the Gambino case. Along with the murders of Epolito and DeMaio, he was accused of extortion, drug trafficking, theft, prostitution, and other crimes. On February 25, 1985, Castellano was released on a $2 million bail, but on July 1st of that same year, he was brought back before the court on new charges of loan sharking and tax evasion. When car thief Vito Arena testified in a court on November 4th, 1985, identifying Castellano as the leader of a stolen car ring that employed him and implicating him in five murders, Castellano's predicament got worse. In the midst of these legal issues, Thomas de la Croce, Castellano's conciliere, passed away on December 2, 1985 from cancer, causing him to experience a personal loss. On December 16, 1985, Castellano went to a pre-planned early evening meeting at Sparks Steakhouse in Midtown Manhattan against this backdrop. Around 5.26 p.m., as he was getting out of the car in front of the restaurant, two assailants approached and opened fire, killing him. The assassination of Paul Castellano signaled a turning point in the history of the Gambino crime family and American Mafia. The conspiracy to kill Castellano included a number of elements and culminated in his death on December 16, 1985. First off, the De La Croce family and their supporters took Castellano's decision not to attend the wake as a slight. Second, despite Thomas Bilotti's reputation as a violent loan shark with poor diplomatic skills, Castellano named him his underboss. This choice was interpreted as a sign of Castellano's growing estrangement from the other Gambino crime family members. As we wrap up the story of Paul Castellano, it's clear that his life was one filled with violence, power, and crime. Castellano's rise to the top of the Gambino crime family was marked by brutal killings and the controversial decisions that left him with many enemies. While his reign as the boss was brief, his impact on the mob world and New York City's history cannot be overlooked. Castellano's business acumen and focus on white-collar crime may have set the stage for future organized crime in America. The story of Paul Big Polly Castellano serves as a cautionary tale of the corrupting influence of power and the consequences that come with the leading life of a crime. It's important to remember that behind every mobster's glamorous lifestyle is a dark world of bloodshed and betrayal. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.